Hi and welcome all. High or low, butcher, baker, tall or small. I am Grimnir and this is the Grimnir Gate. Hi and hello all friends of dwarves. So it's the end of another week of backbreaking toil defying the minions of the Dark Lord, also known as the Man. So let's stick it to the man and enjoy a little banter among friends with full mugs of ale and the smell of long bottom leaf in the air. Welcome to this week's episode of Tavern Talk. So, since it's gonna be a little bit of this and that today, but uh, mostly about the mood in Tolkien's Middle Earth and uh, music and what music can do to your mind, like the memory and the feeling, uh, we just have to start off uh, on a bit lighter note, I think. So, we're gonna let Nergrim Bloodbow. Uh, shine with his joke today. Here it comes. A mighty dwarven warrior is sitting in a bar. He stares at his beer with a clearly melancholic look in his eyes. A drunken bulky warrior man sees his chance to score some points and walks up to the dwarf, punches his shoulder and empties the dwarf's beer. The dwarf starts crying. The bulky warrior sneers. Come on, you wimp! A real man does not cry because of a beer. The dwarf says, Listen, my wife left me today and she took all my gold with her. After that, I lost my job. I didn't want to live anymore. So I lay down on the minecart track, but the miners had gone for the day. So no carts came. I wanted to hang myself. The rope teared. Wanted to shoot myself and my crossbow broke in two. From my remaining silver, I bought a beer, tipped some poison into it, and now you drank it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Master Bloodbow, for that piece of dwarven humor. Maybe a little bit on the dark side, but uh, that actually connects well to the topic of today's tavern talk. And that is about the power of music and melancholia, and how that is uh, appearing in Middle-earth, in Tolkien's version of Middle-earth. I'm probably gonna mix it all up and jump around, and hopefully you will find a thread in it all, and maybe relate to what I'm talking about, in some way, or not. Anyways, just to start the confusion, I'm gonna start uh, a long time ago, when I was young, and uh, you know, since I am born the same year, 1973, uh, the same year Tolkien died, this is quite a while ago. It was summer, and I had embarked on the scary journey of reading Stephen King's grand story, It. You know, with the clown, Pennywise. You might have seen him. Uh, played by Bill Skarsgård in the movie adaption. Well, anywho, I started reading the book and at the same time I listened to the German power metal band Halloween and the record The Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 2, I think. And I listened to this as a backdrop to reading the story. I know it might sound strange, but I was young, you know, could keep more than one ball in the air at the same time and so today I mean listen to music with the lyrics and reading a book at the same time nah, not my game maybe but it was working then so the story went on I had the music and uh, uh, this was the summer and the story took place the main story took place during the summer so many of these things played together and they created a nice memory. Even if it was a bit scary, it was a nice memory. But nowadays, whenever I hear a song from that record, I remember the story in the book. Or vice versa, whenever I read the book, it makes me want to listen to that record. And it's all connected to my room during that summer, when the sun and the smells and the sound of the that summer so it's cre it has created a memory and a feeling that i can go back to and 
both with a feeling of melancholia, but more with a feeling of nostalgia. Well, so what has this got to do with anything? Well, it was during these times that I also read Lord of the Rings. And uh, I had music that I connected to that experience too. But the stories that Tolkien has created, they are in their selves uh, imbued with this sense of uh, melancholia, I believe. And sometimes, of course, it's nice to dig a little deeper into the darker delvings of life, as long as you don't dig too deep and awaken the Balrog. Because if it is used in the right way, like I think Tolkien did, there is a power in it that makes the story greater and more beautiful. Of course, his experiences in early parts of life, losing both his parents early, before he was 13, and uh, losing childhood friends in the Great War, and then later in life losing his uh, love Edith before he himself passed on, of course, all this is uh, coloring his uh, storytelling, I think. And there are many examples in his stories of this uh, melancholic feeling and uh, a little bit of uh, the inevitable passing of time. And a little bit about death is like baked into it too. I read somewhere that uh, uh, the Anglo-Saxon word WIRD, W-Y-R-D, that means fate, luck, chance or doom. And I think that word was uh, important to Tolkien in his writings. And uh, we can take just some obvious examples, I think you will agree, like the passing of times, of the times of the elves, that they all sooner or later are leaving from the grey havens or fading away, and how this is connected very uh, strongly to the fate of Arvan that stays with Aragorn, and by that leaving her kin and turns into a mortal being, and that in turn mirrors the fate of Beren and Lúthien, and uh, with them the magic also is leaving the world and the age of man is coming even if it's doubtful that it ever can compare with the old and Numenorean days the greatness of that or like from the dwarven perspective when Gimli is in Moria uh, the once glorious dwarven city that has fallen into shadows and darkness or the Ents remembering the forest stretching from the Shire down to Rohan and how they had their Ent wives. And the fall of Beleriand, the older days when uh, the War of Wrath destroyed the old world. All of this is a sense of a lost time and time passing on to something new and not necessarily something better. And if you take time to read like the songs and the poems, poems that Tolkien have in his work, you also can have a strong feeling of the lost times and a, a language that have been around for thousands of years. So do the movies, the adaptions by Peter Jackson uh, succeed in uh, conveying this feeling that I believe Tolkien had? Yes, I think they do in a way. Uh, and uh, that also is connected a bit to this game that uh, have succeeded with the music and the landscape and the animation to convey the same feeling of of maybe destiny or weird or uh, maybe if you want the darker version uh, the melancholia that is uh, in his stories and I know that all of you would not agree, but this is my choice. Uh, and I would say that uh, if you take the three tracks that I put down here in the chat, uh, listen to them, and be honest now, listen to them. Below, they are from uh, the Lord of the Rings movie and The Hobbit. And tell me 
that it doesn't make at least one string of melancholia or nostalgia vibrate in you. Because I'm gonna finish on a happier note that if you take these feelings of nostalgia that the story and the music and the atmosphere can uh, give you, it can be transformed into something that I would say a warmer feeling of things past that creates this warmth of a good sense of nostalgia in you. And that is one of the things I can feel when I return and play this game, for example. A small thing like this video game connects me all the way back to my younger days and all the positive uh, experiences in Middle-earth, even though it's full of doom and darkness and weird. So uh, I would say that that sums it up. If you can find a thread, I'm happy. If you cannot, just do like Captain Nergrim and fill up your mug of ale and take another puff on your long bottom leaf. Bye bye, take care.